I am absolutely in love with Harem in Labyrinth of Another World. And if there was any moment of hesitation or if there was any moment of wonderment uh, for me personally, or maybe for you too, to where it's like, mm, I don't know about this anime, you know. Uh, the first thing, okay, the first thing is obviously if you don't like Harem animes, you don't like Echi, this, there's, no, there's nothing this anime can do visually plot story character development world there's absolutely nothing the anime can do to make you like it if you're like mm, i don't like harem i don't like etchy you know what i mean because that's just your personal feelings and you just need to stay out of that category but you're here with me so obviously the only you have to be mental to click on an anime called harem in another world and be like mm, i hope that they don't show too much boobies you know what i mean so i'm gonna get that out the way first and foremost you're, you're crazy if you hear it you're like yo I, I clicked on it for that but regardless, uh, I am in love with this. And the reason that I'm in love is this anime obviously follows Michio and follows him going through, you know, every uh, younger gentleman's fantasy, which is being uh, not only isekai or reincarnated or beamed to another world, uh, but he has the potential to create a harem in this other world, okay? And... The differentiation or where this derives from your normal protagonist is we never really get to see what ends up happening uh, later down the line. Do they, you know, do they procreate? Do they stop being a, you know, a, a weeb? Do they start being, do they stop being uh, timid? Do they take action? Do they actually uh, begin taking action on their desires? You know, in some cases, that's why people like anime, like Redo of Healer, because like, yo, homeboy gets it on, you know, constantly. Now, I don't, need, I don't need to see all that in anime, but, you know, a little subtle hint that, yeah, you know, our boy or our girl got it in or, you know, they, you know, it went in, you know, they got some action, you know, a little hint of that every now and then is a good thing, you know, to kind of like, you know, be like, yo, don't be such a, a, a vanilla, boring ass MC. So where this deviates is in the beginning of the anime, we got to see Michio nine years in the future. Now, we don't we didn't find that out until moments kind of into that uh, flash forward. But we got to see him nine, nine years in the future, and we got to see him uh, conversing or talking to a child who looks exactly like this dude, looks like his little clone. And before we got to know that there was, uh, he had flash forward nine years in the future, uh, you know, some of the questions I had was like, you know, how did he procreate? How did he have a kid? He just he just got here like a week or two ago. You know what I mean? There's no way. And then we find out that, yeah, in fact, this is giving us a glimpse at, you know, nine years in the future to where he comes back to the village that he had originally left. Uh, he gets to, you know, he talks to the original horse that he did. He got to see the hay that he laid in where he got his sandals for the first time. We got to see him interacting with the village that he had originally uh, kind of got isekai into, and he interacts with this child, uh, and he shows us a memory, or the anime shows us a memory of him uh, having um, procreation ceremonies with uh, this individual in this village here, who ends up obviously being the chi the the child's mother, who ends up being the person that he got with to, you know, create this child, and I'm sure we're going to come across this girl uh, later on uh, for how much. How much we get of her, you know, how you know how important she is to the story, I don't know, because the way that this specific scene worked, and this is the most important scene, is why I'm taking the most time. The way this specific scene worked is he meets the kid, he greets the kid, he talks to the kid, he asks him how he's treating his mother, he gives him a weapon to protect his mother, and then he the kid runs to his mother, talks to him, like, hey, that guy over there gave this to me. Uh, he looks back, and then he basically warps away. So my questions from that specific scene is, the kid thinks daddy's dead. Did the did the girl or lady tell the kid that because she believes that? Like she believes Michio died? Did she tell him that because Michio dipped out like a scrub and left his kid in his village? Does she believe that because maybe he left on a mission or something, you know, an, an, a quest and never came back? So there's so many different ways that that truth or that lie could be, you know, important in the future and the second thing is he did come back why not talk to this girl why not you know drum up relations uh why not uh i don't know give a shit about your kid for a second so there's so many different things to where it's like okay the anime may answer that later on so i'm gonna leave that as that there but you know that's kind of the questions that i had but i hope we find out who this girl is i hope we you know i hope that we get to see her more i hope that whatever comes of it i hope that we get more uh interaction and more story behind who this person is uh, and how, what level of importance is this girl to him? Because it must be pretty low for him not to 
do anything when he got the chance to right now in that scene. Uh, the rest of the episode is just focused around him, you know, trying to save up the gold for Roxanne, trying to, you know, save up for, you know, him to actually purchase her. He's very far away. He's thousands and thousands of gold away. Uh, we get to see him struggling through uh, the labyrinth, get to see him almost die, get to see him use the weapon, get to see him initiate some skills, get to see him initiate some jobs, kind of like Final Fantasy. Uh, and we get to see him just kind of get more familiarized with the systems that he has to use, the complex nature of it, as well as just him kind of trying to live in this brand new world. Uh, we get to see all of that development in this episode, which I thought was pretty good as well. Then we get to see the episode end off with, you know, the bandit stuff and him finally say, you know, I'm done. I'm effing done with going through these labyrinths. I'm going to go and take on some uh, bounties to where he can actually earn some cash. And in his head, I already killed a bunch of innocent or potential, you know, I, I already killed some bandits with a few more. So I, I think this anime is about to get spicy. So I'm excited for it. I think this episode, if there was any episode that would, that would, have a like give you a reason to continue watching it was this episode here and i was already hooked but now i'm even further hooked and i'm really excited about that all right my friends i'm gonna leave you guys on those thoughts there thank you for watching me for another week this has been episode two of harem in the labyrinth of another world i will see you guys next wednesday for more harem goodness and you guys have a great rest of your week peace